In terms of uh, recovery and uh, performance around the region, uh, you see multiple speeds of growth across various Asian economies. This does sound complicated. Which regions do you see powering ahead and uh, which economies do you see lagging in Asia? Thank you. Yes. So in terms of regions which we see um, accelerating, we expect ASEAN to actually accelerate. They, we expect it to come out of um, what's currently happening in 2021, where uh, it's really hampered by low rates of vaccination as well as delayed reopening. So ASEAN to definitely accelerate. Uh, regions that we expect to maintain existing pace of growth would be Japan, India, uh, with a slight bias to the upside of an acceleration. And regions which we think or likely moderate would be uh, some pockets of North Asia as well as uh, DM markets. Now, in terms of moderation, we don't think it's going to be a, a start of a down cycle. We are actually seeing moderation, but still it being above trend. Lots of factors like fiscal support, improvements in the medical backdrop, reopenings, as well as consumption to, to actually keep uh, the growth fairly upbeat. So uh, moderation, but still still quite strong. Yeah, China, one of those uh, countries where you see lagging a little, but it seems as if uh, while the developed world is tightening, perhaps the PBOC might be easing pretty soon. Does that improve the case for opportunities when it comes to equities in China for you? Yeah, so within China, we, we, we look at A shares versus H shares, and our current preference is still to go towards A shares. And the key reason is because uh, if you look at the sector composition of A shares, it's still fairly sheltered from all the regulatory pressures that we currently see affecting uh, China internet um, and, and the clampdown on that area. So that's one. And then two, the other, the other part which we see that will be beneficial is, is earnings. We don't expect a huge moderation of earnings within A shares as compared to H shares as markets digest more and more regulatory news coming out on the on regulation on China internet. And uh, last but, least, uh, but not least, in terms of um, the benefits, uh, A share markets have a higher uh, percentage to to consumption and specifically on the ground consumption and we think it's in line with what the Chinese government is trying to push for which is common prosperity which we expect it to benefit. Ray, I'm taking a look at the South African yuan this morning and it's we're seeing quite a bit of a pressure here. One uh, percent lower. We're beyond 16 per dollar amid this concern about this new variant that has been detected uh, in, in in Africa. I'm just wondering how closely are you watching the virus developments now uh, and how does that factor into your thinking? Yes, yeah, so definitely it's one of the top three risks that we think can derail a lot of the outlook that there is positive outlook that's out there. One would be uh, the, the development and the mutation of this new virus. And I think what's key is to try and identify whether existing vaccine treatments can deal with it. Uh, the second is to also take a look at the upcoming uh, treatments that are in the pipeline. For example, the, the pill variant of the vaccine and whether it is, uh, it is effective against it. Uh, if it does uh, show efficacy, then I think we don't really have that much to worry about. But if it is, then we, have, we would have a lot more to worry about. I think we'll probably, we'll probably look at what happened in 2020 and probably a portion of that replay may potentially happen if we are unable to deal with it and continue reopening. Uh, I take a look at just multi-assets, which is your position. I'm just wondering when it comes to what has outperformed this year, it's really been three things, stocks, commodities, uh, as well as crypto. Is that likely to be the case for next year, Ray? Yeah, so for next year, our preferences are certain pockets of currencies that we think will continue to outperform. That's one uh, specific pockets of stocks. I don't think we can buy broad stocks anymore. It's going to be a bit more challenging. And I'll cover that in, in, in the following two key points. So in terms of pockets of currencies, I expect the dollar to do, to do fairly well. Uh, there's been a lot of chatter on inflation pressure. We think inflation will likely remain sticky, uh, at least for the first quarter of next year, uh, before we start to see some signs of moderation. That will keep front-end rates fairly elevated and you couple that with the Fed indicating wanting to increase its pace of hikes to give it the optionality of, uh, of, of hiking and sorry it increases pace of tapering um, all that would push would push the dollar a, a little stronger now in terms of pockets of equities uh, we we prefer Japan and we prefer ASEAN ASEAN in particular we do see a huge um, opportunity in terms of acceleration in growth uh, coming out of uh, a, a huge 
a huge delay in its reopening as well as vaccination play. In addition, if you take a look and factor in a higher interest rate environment, a high yielding environment, uh, ASEAN has huge exposures to, um, to, to banks, specifically Indonesia and in Singapore. And, if, and, and the central banks over there are also watching inflation and have a slight hawkish bias, so we expect that to benefit. And then the far, last, third and final piece is the digitalization of, of ASEAN. We're starting to see more and more um, mm. internet growth type companies crawl into ASEAN and we think that will be beneficial on balance.